What's up guys? Hey, welcome back to another live video. Today we're going to talk about lipid testing. I'm going to share with you some new research that's emerging in research circles about and kind of comparing like lipid testing to what we do, uh, we, what practitioners, what researchers, what scientists, what doctors do uh, when they suspect someone has type 2 diabetes in the context of glucose. So you know the glucose tolerance test and looking at post meal or post challenge blood glucose levels and also insulin levels it gives a much better insight and perspective to someone's metabolic health than does just looking at their fasting numbers, right? But yet when it comes to lipids, whether it's triglycerides or gluca or <laughs> cholesterol, uh, you know, it's commonly recommended that you fast before the test. And I just got my lab work this morning done. I haven't gotten the results back yet. I'm going to be sharing with you guys all that on Monday. But about five, four or five months ago, I did my lipids um, in addition to liver function tests and a few other tests, hormones and all that sort of stuff. I was just kind of retesting things, signed up with a new uh, testing company that I'll let you know about if you're interested. And I actually had a bulletproof like fatty coffee before I went and my LDL cholesterol, my total cholesterol and my trigly triglycerides were high, right? Not that I really care because I know that historically for the past 12 years that I've been running labs on myself on an annual basis, they're low. But anyway, um, I want to share with you the difference, you know, before like a Bulletproof coffee. Again, I love Bulletproof. I like Dave Asprey. I like their products. I'm not saying it's bad or good or whatever. I'm just saying there's going to be a difference in the response. So anyway, um, I'm just going to make sure that you guys can see me and then we're going to talk about the science. Just kind of check in. I have family coming up in just a minute. We're going to do some dinner and all that sort of stuff. But as always, I just like to hop on here occasionally, you know, do these live streams, catch up with you guys. They're definitely more informal than our videos. Um, all right, we got a few of you on here. What's up, guys? Happy Thursday night. Thanks for... Uh, Thanks for hopping on. So if you guys uh, are going to do your lab soon, I would recommend that uh, we t I talked about this on my Facebook page uh, recently. Um, you know, you definitely want, here's a few labs you want to, and then when more people come on, we'll talk more about the lipid load test. But I like to make sure that I'm looking at my ferritin, my iron, my total iron binding capacity. So to rule out off the top anemias, because if you're anemic, it's going to be hard to really get the energy to get out and exercise and do physical activity which is so critical in my estimation and the clients that I've worked with when it comes to losing fat and becoming more fat adapted. You know, a lot of people fast their way to fat adaptation and that's great. That's awesome. But you know, some of the hormonal messages that kind of trigger and pivot your body to burn more fat for fuel are triggered uh, when you deplete glycogen, right? And that glycogen depletion causes glucagon to be increased. Glucagon, of course, as you know from Dr. Ben Bickman and other interviews that we've talked about, uh, helps to stimulate lipolysis from the fat tissue so that it can be either burned through beta oxidation and, and you know utilized to make cellular energy, or those lipids from uh, lipolysis of fat tissue can actually be utilized to make ketones, which a lot of people are excited about, right? So that's one of the benefits of exercise. Even if you're going to start fasting, exercise before the pat before the fast. Hey, Nezzy, is Chris here? Go, go say hi. My brother's here, so we're going to um, have some food in a little, little bit. Anyway, but I just want to leave you with this, this piece of advice. Um, you know, even if your doctor says you got to fast before your lab work, you know, depending upon what you're trying, that's my daughter Inez, uh, depending upon what you're trying to look at, actually maybe not fasting may give you some interesting insights into your post-meal ability to process lipids. And so not that fat's bad and all that sort of stuff, but the inability to handle fat properly in the post meal window can create what's known as endothelial dysfunction. So if you look at like, I don't know if you can see my veins, there's a lot of light coming in here. But you know, the, the interior mucosa layer, the epithelial layer is called the endothelial layer. And when that becomes sick or dysfunctional, that's when we get vascular dis-ease, right? And so that's really why cholesterol has been blamed wrongly, partly, for many, many years as to cause, you know, heart disease and plaque and all that because it was found, you know, a, a cholesterol accumulation was associated with this endothelial dysfunction. Um, I've learned all this from a mentor, Dr. Mark Houston, down in uh, Vanderbilt area uh, in Tennessee. But anyway, long story short, you know, so we want to see how the body's able to process fats in the post meal window. So that's why I recommend, like, say you do labs twice a year, once a year, whatever. Try having like a very high fat meal, like 100 grams of fat. Now, this can be a, a, a meal that you would normally eat. And this is another tip uh, that I would offer to you: is when you're doing your labs. Don't try and like change your behavior and cut out things that you normally eat just to make the labs look pretty. 
the only person that's that's not serving anyone. You know, that's actually going to take away from realistic insights into your own health. And the only one that cares about your health more than you is you, right? You are, you know, the dry in the driver's seat of your own health, right? So if you're robbing yourself by not getting the most accurate information by changing your behavior before you do a lab test, you're not going to impress your doctor, right? I mean, maybe, maybe not, but you want to impress yourself. You don't really want to see how is your life. So, so when I do labs, I don't, I don't change a lot of things. It's not like I over exercise or stop exercising or do these different things. I want to see what, you know, metabolic processes are occurring uh, in my body when I do tests. So anyway, getting back to the tests, you definitely want to do your three liver function tests. That's AST, ALT, and GGT. Most doctors will, will not even look at GGT and they just do AST and ALT. That's really not giving you a good insight into your body's glutathione status and your, your potential heavy metal or environmental toxin exposure. So that's important. Anemia, as I mentioned, uh, lac uh, lactase dehydrogenase. We're going to talk about this tomorrow when I post this interview with Dr. Paul Anderson. So make sure you're subscribing to the channel if you're not already, because he's going to talk all about LDH. Nation Winters talks about that, but it's a really good metabolic test to kind of see what's going on metabolically. I got mine tested this morning. I'll share with you guys that insight. So. Um, my brother's here, so we gotta cook some dinner and stuff, guys. I'll hop on here and see if we have a few questions that I can answer. But this was just designed to be kind of short and sweet. It's 521, you made it, thanks for being here. Um, Nezzy, what's happening? Um, audio great, video great, boom, boom, boom. Guys, thanks for the likes, thanks for the love, thanks for being here. Tomas, Mike, uh, cholesterol code, yeah. So um, I wanna get Dave on the podcast. I haven't met with him. I mean, we have talked in person, but I have not, like, um, I don't know. I know he he calls this like the lean mass hyper responder. I think I need to know a little bit more about that. So Sherry says, Mike, I got the results this week and they're stellar, best uh, in my life. HDL sixty, LDL ninety seven, blah blah blah. That's great, guys. So um, yeah, so that's pretty much it, friends. Um, we're gonna cook some dinner. So I just want to hop on quick. I got a really good podcast coming in the morning. So if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, when you wake up and you're getting about your day check out the YouTube page because you're gonna see an awesome interview with Dr. Paul Anderson all about cancer. And my wife and I have some new eBooks coming out, friends, just in time for Mother's Day. And if you wanna learn how to make some raw, low-carb, high-fat vegetable-based bread using soaked and sprouted locally prepared nuts and seeds, it's really, really good, really good for your microbiome, good for your health. Um, Click the link below, below this video. I actually have a free e-course, guys, all about keto and keto adaptation and, and avoiding some of the pitfalls that a lot of people you know, kind of fall into when they start keto. So definitely check that out. It's free. Five videos in there that will help you. We have Ben Bickman. We have Dom D'Agostino. We have Dr. David Jockers. We have some with myself. It's really, really good. So if you want to check it out, please do so. And that's about it. So I hope you have an awesome day, awesome evening, wherever you are in the world. And I'll catch you on the next chat. And if you have any other questions, hit that comment bar. If you're watching the replay, I'll try and jump in when I can, guys. So uh, Spive21, thanks for being here as always. We'll catch you guys a little bit later. Have a good one.